You can be faithful to a person, but still devalue them and be unfaithful to respecting them. Do you ever feel like you were in a relationship that was just toxic? And that was just a struggle to continue to have adult conversations or continue to interact with. Maybe you struggled with, you know, lies that were happening inside the relationship and there was no ground in like truth. Everything seemed to be like fiction or like what's actually real. And did you ever struggle in a toxic relationship and try to make sense of the crazy making? Maybe the gaslighting, maybe abuse, maybe manipulation, maybe just crazy making. A lot of times people talk about narcissistic relationships and there's so many things out there that we can use to define or give examples and not just the nine traits of narcissistic personality disorder, but then how they're exemplified and how they actually come out. Well, if you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor and I'm a narcissist. I'm a person that's now on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. And part of the reason why I'm on here is because a lot of times people don't know what narcissism looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. I was talking to a couple of people even today that were going over different things and that they're experiencing in their life, either getting into therapy or trying to talk to therapists and being like, they don't understand. Like they don't connect with what I'm going through, or what I'm struggling with, or they don't see it, or they don't see the toxicity because they don't. And a lot of times we're seeing more and more that people are not educated about narcissism. They don't see and understand what it actually is and how it actually looks in real life. The therapists, the, the counselors, the people in clinical studying for that that I've talked to that have come to me and that have done coaching or one-on-ones to be able to work through that process of getting out of a narcissistic relationship and what that looked like, normally say about the same thing. We've learned about this. We've studied about this. We learned about narcissism in school, but we didn't know that it looked this way in real life. And so oftentimes you've got therapists that are, you know, pushing them to get into couples counseling, which is a bad idea with a narcissist, or they're, you know, getting uh, bamboozled by the narcissist that's in that relationship and is like, hey, like I'm actually a nice person. It's the other person. So there's a lot of confusion that happens with it. So today I want to talk about a couple different things with a narcissistic relationship. Some about cycles, the mass, cheating, distorting reality, lies, different things like that, that a lot of times are, you know, their own separate videos. But I want to kind of combine a couple of things today to talk about narcissistic relationship and also exemplify some of my narcissistic relationship and myself, you know, in that relationship and how I've done things that have been destructive in nature and hurt different people. Like I mentioned, I'm on this channel now to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. We do that by dropping free content everywhere. If you don't like, follow, subscribe on any of the other platforms. Look us up sometime. Just type in Raw Motivations. Give us a like and give us a review. If you're on Apple, either Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, or uh, Spotify, give us a like or review on there as well, please. If you guys haven't had a chance, download the NARC app. Just type in NARC. It stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. Exclusive lives, monthly coaching, whole lot of stuff that's going into the app and as it continues to develop to help you heal grow and change. Let's dive in. All right, so a lot of times when you're with a person with narcissistic personality disorder, you notice cycles, right? You know, sometimes those cycles can be very, very minute, and sometimes they can very be very, very precise. I talked to one person that their cycle was exactly six months. So six months, they would get into a major argument, he would leave the relationship and would come back about a month later, and then they'd start that cycle all over again. But it happened for years, every six months and go out, get his fix with something else, then come back to the relationship, start it all over again, and then have it, have it go again. Other people, it might be completely random of like, it doesn't have any rhyme or reason. It doesn't have any like regiment that it follows, but you notice a cycle, right? That's what I noticed. And that's one of the first things that I started picking up on and, and learning about throughout my life was that I started to see patterns of behavior and seeing that I had cycles. For me personally, my cycle was always going from girl to girl. And that happened from a young age into high school, into college of where I was always cycling through other people. And typically it wasn't like I would have a relationship, it would end normally, everything would be fine, and then there'd be like this period of time and then get with another person. No, my cycle oftentimes interwoven in between each other. And so a lot of times I would be with a person and make friends with another person. And then that relationship would start to turn into something more. And then I would get out of the other relationship. 
for me though, my cycle wasn't necessarily this big overt of like, hey, I'm breaking up with you. Now I'm with this person breaking up with you. It was always like subtly doing things that would end up having them leave. And then I could keep that victim mentality of it's not my fault. It's someone else. Everybody leaves me. And I started developing these cycles over and over. And then I thought maybe getting married, maybe continuing further, you know, with one person was dating, with another person I was engaged, with another person I was married. Like along those lines, maybe if I continue this pattern, it'll fix itself and I'll feel better about myself or, or I will stop having this cycle. But the cycle never stopped. A lot of times you'll see the mask slip or you'll see the mask fall. And for me, like the mask started to slip after engagement. After we engaged, then like it started to kind of change my perspective, started to change my mindset, my thought process, like the, the devaluing kind of stage started happening subtly, really small of like shifting into my mindset of like this person isn't the right person. Or, this person isn't the best person for me, or maybe there's someone else out there. And like all those thoughts start prevailing. And then after marriage, after wedding night, that's when the mass fell. Then I was the asshole. Then I was the person that I'd been the whole time, but the facade and the image that I put up then fell. And it showed out really quick as we got back from honeymoon, as we got involved in regular everyday life and the criticism and devaluing that I did of my wife happened constantly. I don't even remember all the things that happened in that. Like she'll remind me about them sometimes or we'll talk through them as part of like the healing process and like growing and taking accountability. One of the first things that, you know, I brought up even on social media was the fact one time of like devaluing her about the noodles that she used in the food that she made, saying that this dish isn't the same as what I'm used to, or this dish isn't as good as what my mom used to make, or this isn't up to my standard. And like making her feel stupid and devalued in that area was also a level of like control of like, I'm better than you. And that came out, especially after marriage. Make fun of or would would say like, hey, like stop doing it this way because you're doing it wrong. Like you're doing this wrong. Like like folding folding clothes. Like, hey, you don't fold clothes right. Or you don't do it the way that I want it. Or, you know, all these different types of things would happen in the relationship and would argue a lot of times just to get my way. Sometimes that argument would be huge, like that cycle. Sometimes it'd be huge so that I could get an excuse to walk out of the house or to to go do something or go hang out with someone that I wanted to hang out with. Whatever it might be, it was all put there and that came out after marriage. That's when the mask slipped. Oftentimes there'd be aspects of like not letting go of arguments. And you see this a lot on social media where you'll see people recording like the abusive nature of different people or toxicity. And you see how a lot of times it's impossible almost for that other person to let it go. It's like conversation comes to a halt and then they come back a second later. Well, you did this or I wouldn't do this if it wasn't for you. Like all those different times things. Those are the things that I exemplified in my marriage. Another big aspect you see a lot of times with narcissists is cheating. Narcissists cheat. They do, either physically, emotionally, or they put something else above you. It was interesting. I was looking up the other day. I just looked up, just Googled definition of a cheater. First thing that came up was a person who acts dishonestly in order to gain an advantage. That's just narcissism, period. So everybody's like, are they cheaters or not? Like, yeah. If they're acting dishonestly in order to gain advantage, absolutely. The other aspect, are they unfaithful to a spouse or partner? You can be faithful to a person, but still devalue them and be unfaithful to respecting them or unfaithful to the actual relationship of caring about that person. So that's why I normally say like, yeah, narcissists are cheaters. I exemplify that in my own life of throughout the course of our marriage of of throughout the course of about eight years being married that I had five affairs. And they were all long lasting. They weren't just like quick, short things. Narcissists also like to distort reality. Typically, like how I would do that is I would communicate how she was wrong. Like how like something that just happened was wrong. Of like, hey, you didn't actually experience that. Like that didn't happen. And typically that'd be me trying to get away from that accountability and that responsibility of like, I didn't say that. Like, what are you talking about? And I'd argue a point up into a place and then I realized my point might be wrong. Then I'd switch and be like, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was just playing devil's advocate. I was just trying to see if you actually knew what you were talking about. But yeah, that's what I meant the whole time. That's, that's, that's what I agree. Because I couldn't take that idea of actually saying out, out loud, I was wrong. 
A lot of times at the end of a relationship, I'd promise different things. I'd say like, hey, I'm going to change. I'd get her gifts. I'd, you know, promise change of like, like, we're getting so much better. Like, don't leave now. Like, we can make this work. All manipulation. And that's what narcissists do when they distort reality. They do it in three ways. They gaslight, they love bomb, and they future fake. If you want to hear more about that, we've got a video coming out later today about them distorting reality. And then lies, right? Narcissists oftentimes are known for their lies. They're known for manipulating and lying to other people. Typically, the, the, the easiest one to do is the lie of omission. I'm going to tell you that I went to the store, which is true, and I can prove it that I went to the store because I have a receipt because I went to the store, but I'm not going to tell you why it took so long to go to the store because I met up with someone else or because I was cheating or because I was doing something, you know, whatever it might be. And the lies that I would have in, like, it implemented into all aspects of my life, to my job, to my coworkers, to my wife, to my family, everything like that. And those lies kept building up more and more and more. And it wasn't until I started getting honest with myself that I don't just have lies to everybody else, but I have lies to myself, trying to convince myself of something that's not actually real, trying to convince myself of the mask that I'm putting up that says, hey, I'm a good person. But I wasn't demonstrating that. I wasn't living that. And as a result, I wasn't a good person. And I can't identify as being a good person. I can't identify with being a Christian then. I can't identify with being, you know, faithful or being loving. But those are things that I would put out there and say, hey, this is what I am. But it was all facade and it was all a lie. To try to keep that mask and to control that mask and ultimately control the people around me to believe that mask. There's just a couple things in my relationship and how it's exemplified in my life. Maybe you might relate to some of those. If you do, leave a comment down below. Share this with a friend. Help them understand more about narcissism than what they might know already.